Hey everyone, Kuro the Artist here. A little over a year ago, Ash and I sat down with Duncan Rollo, one of the four members of Man of Action, the creators of Ben 10, for an interview regarding the past, present, and future of Ben 10. We decided to ask him about the legendary, mysterious screenshots of what appeared to be a pilot episode of Ben 10. He responded that these screenshots were unfamiliar and most likely fan art, putting an end to over a decade's worth of speculation until footage from the actual pilot was found. It goes without saying that Ben 10's lore is nothing short of complicated, and the history of the show is no different. Throughout its production, Ben 10 has had many names, many concepts, and a plethora of various alien designs. But the one thing fans have been wondering for years is where these peculiar images that have randomly surfaced one day came from, immediately sparking speculation of their origin. For starters, the images line up perfectly with a scene from the second episode of Season 1 titled Washington BC, specifically the scene in the grocery store where Ben is trying to find the Golden Sumo Slammer card. There are a few notable differences between the two scenes, the most obvious being Gwen's design. Her hair is much longer and kept in a ponytail, while sporting a red and yellow shirt with a mushroom in the center. Ben's hair is slightly shorter as well, along with having a much rounder face and smaller pupils. Max appears to be exactly the same, but the background, while similar, is a completely different drawing. So far, this isn't anything short of what a fan artist may create, as editing screenshots for amusement is fairly common in the Ben 10 fandom. So without a source, this shouldn't be taken too seriously, right? Well, the screenshots were soon accompanied by this height chart. Unfortunately, this is the best resolution I can find, but you may notice that this chart contains the same Gwen design as shown in the previously mentioned screenshots. It's not unheard of, but it is a bit unorthodox for an edit like this to exist, as charts like these are made for animation production purposes and not exactly the peak interest for fan art and fan edits. But what made this chart even more intriguing is that it contains other elements from Ben 10's early development that has already been confirmed to be real, such as this placeholder logo with the letters in red and a silhouette of Ben's Omnitrix arm. Wild Mutt has his paws in an outward canine position, as shown in one of his concepts by Dave Johnson, and Ripjaws has two tails behind him instead of one also shown in earlier production art of Ripjaws, but later changed in the series proper. Accelerate is shown with a green visor, which he also sported in the online Flash game Ben to the Rescue, which came out around the same time as the series premiere to help promote the show. In this present height chart, the only design not confirmed to have been real at some point is Gwen, which does line up with these two screenshots. This led many to believe that these are surviving artifacts at a possible Ben 10 pilot episode that not only went unaired, but had no evidence of existing beyond these three images here. It's not a lot to go off of, but it's enough to build a case for that possibility. And for many years, this is about as far as the story went. In August 2020, Man of Action co-founder Duncan Rouleau agreed to an interview to help promote the release of the 2016 reboot's film, Ben 10 vs. The Universe. In the interview, we asked Duncan about some of the early development of Ben 10, in which he shared lots of fascinating information about the show's creation, including unused titles and ideas that were reworked into what we are now familiar with. A link to the full interview will be down below for those interested. In the interview, Ash and I brought up these images directly to Duncan to see if it held any weight. This image I've been seeing, I hope I'm sharing this correctly. Yeah, that's um, not, uh, that's a fan piece. Because this has been floating around for a decade and I'd like to just put some definitive- Put it to sleep. This was somebody, yeah. somebody doing a, uh, somebody, this is a fan piece. This had nothing to do with any development that I'm aware of. If there was some internal Cartoon Network development, somebody drew up some pieces, uh, it's always a possibility, but then it never got any weight beyond those kind of drawings. Sadly, this wasn't exactly the answer we were hoping for, but if it's true that this was all an elaborate fan piece, at least we can have an answer to our speculation. But is this truly the right answer? <music> 
some fans still held on to their hope and sought to seek out answers elsewhere, just to cover more ground. This brings us back to Dave Johnson, the original character designer for the series and self-proclaimed co-creator of the show itself. Dave may have had a larger hand in the development of Ben 10 than we realize, despite only being credited for his art. In a similar vein, Derek J. Wyatt was only credited as the art director of Omniverse, but it is well known that he did have a significant say in the direction of Omniverse as a whole, so perhaps the same can be said for Dave. If anyone could tell us any different, Dave Johnson would be our guy. Shortly after the interview, Twitter user Tron Travolta tweeted out to Dave Johnson, asking for his own take on the alleged pilot screenshots. To our surprise, Dave's comments contradicted Duncan's word and confidently claims their legitimacy. He goes on to explain the image was proof of concept before the show began, and notes that Gwen's mushroom shirt design was changed to a cat for the series proper due to Cartoon Network wanting to prevent any type of drug reference. It's also worth noting that some of Dave Johnson's original concept art for Ben contains a design that looks very similar to his appearance in these screenshots, with shorter hair and a rounder face. His portfolio also showcases a design for Gwen that very much lines up with the screenshots, although this time with a koala emblem instead of a mushroom. This in-depth answer from Dave was enough to change a lot of minds, including my own. Now, I wouldn't fault Duncan for being incorrect about these screenshots. For one, if it was for pre-production, it may not have even made it to Duncan's desk before it was nixed. And even if it did, we're talking about images from nearly two decades ago by now, as Ben 10 began development around 2003. Personally, I constantly forget images that I've drawn myself less than a year ago, nonetheless 20. So it's completely believable that Duncan either forgot or was unaware of these screenshots from the get-go, and I feel we should all excuse his previous statement with no ill will. Please don't go around trying to shove this in his face or anything like that. We're all human here probably. But now that the images have been confirmed to be real, we still aren't sure where the images came from. Were these simply still images drawn up as proof of concept to help visualize the show's final product? Or were these screenshots from fully animated sequences? We know that this shot in particular matches up with the sequence from Washington, B.C., but upon further inspection, Grandpa Max matches up line for line with the pilot image, to the point where I believed they reused this exact animation frame for the official episode, or at least traced over it. The same can be said for Gwen, as her lines match up so precisely that this must have been an animation asset and not simply a single illustration. This means that there really is an unaired pilot out there, but where is it? On November 19th, 2021, longtime Ben 10 community member Roxy found something nothing short of legendary and is the very reason I'm making this video in the first place. Actual, moving footage from the unaired pilot was uncovered. How, you may ask? Well, let's ask her herself. This is Roxy, Galvin Archivist Extraordinaire and owner of the Ben 10 Lost and Found blog. Greetings to the Ink Tank and all Lost and Found followers. I'm making my first public appearance to talk about this most historic finding. Roxy runs a Tumblr blog dedicated to Ben 10 Lost and Found media, and frequently does deep dive searches into very obscure areas to recover previously unknown or lost images, video, art, and information. Whether or not you have a Tumblr account, I highly suggest checking out her blog, as there's pages upon pages of fascinating finds, and the blog still gets updated to this day. The link to the blog will be down below. So I do a lot of hunting on Internet Archive's Wayback Machine for rare and interesting content to share to the blog. These coveted 12 seconds of animation were stashed away in a shockwave flash file from Cartoon Network UK's Ben 10 microsite, circa Earth Year 2006. On that website, you can see a looping clip of Ben from what appears to be from the infamous grocery store scene in Washington, B.C. And when you hover your mouse over it, the clip will change to a clip of forearms' as transformation sequence. Just another one of those creative ways mid-2000s websites would try to make their pages look cool and high-tech. Now, unfortunately, these clips are incredibly low resolution, as they were only rendered for these very tiny hexagons and not a full-screen dedicated viewing. But upon further inspection, you may notice something interesting. Short hair, 
small pupils, rounded face? Is this actual footage from the unaired pilot? Maybe you're right, Grandpa. I don't deserve a gold sumo slammer card. I mean, it's not like I rescued a bunch of people from a burning building. Let's take a look at that forearms footage. This animation is more recognizable, but the background looks completely different and doesn't match up with anything we've ever seen before. It's worth noting that when Omniverse was being developed, promotional material showcased feedback and blocks having different backgrounds for their transformations too. So swapping out backgrounds during pre-production is a very common practice in Ben 10. And while the last few frames line up with the official version of the sequence, some of the earlier frames appear to have been redrawn before the final version. But the point is, we have real, moving footage of the unaired pilot that pairs up with the screenshots and the height chart, officially confirming the legitimacy that an unaired pilot exists, or at least a fully animated test sequence. Previously, all we knew of this footage was three screenshots, so to find actual animation from this unaired piece of media is groundbreaking. Perhaps, under the right circumstances, Cartoon Network would be willing to dig up and release this pilot for us all to see. Maybe if I find the right people to contact and ask about it, I can do a follow-up video if it ever comes to light. But for now, you can enjoy these newfound sequences as many times as you'd like over on Roxy's blog, linked down below. This is Roxy, signing off, and thanks for watching everybody. Back to you, Kuro. Thanks again, Roxy. This wouldn't have been possible without you. Now, before I end this video, I'd like to bring attention to the Ben 10 for Multiverses campaign. Warner Brothers recently announced a crossover fighting game involving all of their properties. And yes, this includes Cartoon Network characters. It would be an incredible win for the fandom if we can ensure Ben's inclusion in the game. And you can even help show support by tweeting out the hashtag Ben 10 for Multiverses, or join the official Multiverses Discord server and suggest Ben 10 in their character wishlist channel. I will link that down below as well. Feel free to retweet this edit I made over on my Twitter too, just to show you what it might look like. But please be respectful with this movement. There's a fine line between being vocal and straight up spamming and harassment, and we'd like the Multiverses team to take this campaign seriously and allow the hero of heroes to enter the battle. That being said, thanks for watching this video. I hope you all have a great rest of your weekend. And as always, keep it fizzy. What?